Welcome to episode 4 of this 5 part video documentary about butterflies. In this series I will talk about different butterfly related topics and if you want to learn about butterflies, I suggest you watch all episodes. In this fourth episode, I will talk about behavior and ecology, which includes parasitoids, predators and pathogens, endangered species, defenses. Let's start with talking about behavior. Butterflies feed primarily on nectar from flowers. Some also derive nourishment from pollen, tree sap, rotting fruit, dung, decaying flesh, and dissolved minerals in wet sand or dirt. Butterflies are important as pollinators for some species of plants. In general, they do not carry as much pollen load as bees, but they are capable of moving pollen over greater distances. Flower constancy has been observed for at least one species of butterfly. Adult butterflies consume only liquids, ingested through the proboscis. They sip water from damp patches for hydration and feed on nectar from flowers, from which they obtain sugars for energy, and sodium and other minerals vital for reproduction. Several species of butterflies need more sodium than that provided by nectar and are attracted by sodium in salt, they sometimes land on people, attracted by the salt in human sweat. Some butterflies also visit dung and scavenge rotting fruit or carcasses to obtain minerals and nutrients. In many species, this mud puddling behavior is restricted to the males, and studies have suggested that the nutrients collected may be provided as an optional gift, along with the spermatophore, during mating. In hilltopping, males of some species seek hilltops and ridge tops, which they patrol in search for females. Since it usually occurs in species with low population density, it is assumed these landscape points are used as meeting places to find mates. Butterflies use their antennae to sense the air for wind and scents. The antennae come in various shapes and colors, the Hesperides have a pointed angle or hook to the antennae, while most other families show knobbed antennae. The antennae are richly covered with sensory organs known as sensile. A butterfly's sense of taste is coordinated by chemoreceptors on the tarsi, or feet, which work only on contact, and are used to determine whether an egg-laying insect's offspring will be able to feed on a leaf before eggs are laid on it. Many butterflies use chemical signals, pheromones, some have specialized scent scales, andraconia, or other structures, carima to or hair pencils in the Danaidae. Vision is well developed in butterflies and most species are sensitive to the ultraviolet spectrum. Many species show sexual dimorphism in the patterns of UV reflective patches. Color vision may be widespread but has been demonstrated in only a few species. Some butterflies have organs of hearing and some species make stridulatory and clicking sounds. Many species of butterfly maintain territories and actively chase other species or individuals that may stray into them. Some species will bask or perch on chosen perches. The flight styles of butterflies are often characteristic and some species have courtship flight displays. Butterflies can only fly when their temperature is above 27 degrees Celsius, 81 degrees Fahrenheit, when it is cool, they can position themselves to expose the underside of the wings to the sunlight to heat themselves up. If their body temperature reaches 40 degrees Celsius, 104 degrees Fahrenheit, they can orientate themselves with the folded wings edgewise to the sun. Basking is an activity which is more common in the cooler hours of the morning. Some species have evolved dark wing bases to help in gathering more heat and this is especially evident in alpine forms. As in many other insects, the lift generated by butterflies is more than can be accounted for by steady state, non-transitory aerodynamics. Studies using Vanessa Atalanta in a wind tunnel show that they use a wide variety of aerodynamic mechanisms to generate force. These include wake capture, vortices at the wing edge, rotational mechanisms and the wise folk clap and fling mechanism. Butterflies are able to change from one mode to another rapidly. Let's talk a little bit about ecology. First about parasitoids, predators and pathogens. Butterflies are threatened in their early stages by parasitoids and in all stages by predators, diseases and environmental factors. 
Braconid and other parasitic wasps lay their eggs in Lepidoptera and larvae and the wasps' parasitoid larvae devour their hosts, usually pupating inside or outside the desiccated husk. Most wasps are very specific about their host species and some have been used as biological controls of pest butterflies like the large white butterfly. When the small cabbage white was accidentally introduced to New Zealand, it had no natural enemies. In order to control it, some pupae that had been parasitized by a calcid wasp were imported, and natural control was thus regained. Some flies lay their eggs on the outside of caterpillars and the newly hatched fly larvae bore their way through the skin and feed in a similar way to the parasitoid wasp larvae. Predators of butterflies include ants, spiders, wasps, and birds. Caterpillars are also affected by a range of bacterial, viral and fungal diseases, and only a small percentage of the butterfly eggs laid ever reach adulthood. The bacterium Bacillus thuringiensis has been used in sprays to reduce damage to crops by the caterpillars of the large white butterfly, and the entomopathogenic fungus Boveria barciana has proved effective for the same purpose. Endangered Species Queen Alexandra's birdwing is the largest butterfly in the world. The species is endangered, and is one of only three insects, the other two being butterflies as well, to be listed on Appendix 1 of Sites, making international trade illegal. Black grass dart butterfly, Acibidiestes nitorum, is a butterfly of the family Hesperiidae. It is endemic to New South Wales. It has a very limited distribution in the Boambi area. Defenses. Butterflies protect themselves from predators by a variety of means. Chemical defenses are widespread and are mostly based on chemicals of plant origin. In many cases the plants themselves evolved these toxic substances as protection against herbivores. Butterflies have evolved mechanisms to sequester these plant toxins and use them instead in their own defense. These defense mechanisms are effective only if they are well advertised, this has led to the evolution of bright colors in unpalatable butterflies, aposematism. This signal is commonly mimicked by other butterflies, usually only females. A Batesian mimic imitates another species to enjoy the protection of that species aposematism. The common Mormon of India has female morphs which imitate the unpalatable red-bodied swallowtails, the common rose and the crimson rose. Malarian mimicry occurs when aposematic species evolve to resemble each other, presumably to reduce predator sampling rates. Heliconius butterflies from the Americas are a good example. Camouflage is found in many butterflies. Some like the oak leaf butterfly and autumn leaf are remarkable imitations of leaves. As caterpillars, many defend themselves by freezing and appearing like sticks or branches. Others have diamatic behaviors, such as rearing up and waving their front ends which are marked with eye spots as if they were snakes. Some papillionid caterpillars such as the giant swallowtail, Papilio crisphontis, resemble bird droppings so as to be passed over by predators. Some caterpillars have hairs and bristly structures that provide protection while others are gregarious and form dense aggregations. Some species are myrmcophiles, forming mutualistic associations with ants and gaining their protection. Behavioral defenses include perching and angling the wings to reduce shadow and avoid being conspicuous. Some female nymphalid butterflies guard their eggs from parasitoidal wasps. The Lycaenidae have a false head consisting of eye spots and small tails, false antennae, to deflect attack from the more vital head region. These may also cause ambush predators such as spiders to approach from the wrong end, enabling the butterflies to detect attacks promptly. Many butterflies have eye spots on the wings, these too may deflect attacks, or may serve to attract mates. Auditory defenses can also be used, which in the case of the grizzled skipper refers to vibrations generated by the butterfly upon expanding its wings in an attempt to communicate with ant predators. Many tropical butterflies have seasonal forms for dry and wet seasons. These are switched by the hormone ectosone. The dry season forms are usually more cryptic, perhaps offering better camouflage when vegetation is scarce. Dark colors in wet season forms may help to absorb solar radiation. 
butterflies without defenses such as toxins or mimicry protect themselves through a flight that is more bumpy and unpredictable than in other species. It is assumed this behavior makes it more difficult for predators to catch them, and is caused by the turbulence created by the small whirlpools formed by the wings during flight. This fourth video in this five-part video documentary is coming to an end, but in two weeks from now, the fifth and last part will be released with a lot of more specific information about butterflies. Thank you for watching this fourth episode and I'll see you next time.